of another week of life according to Liv. It's been a very sad week for us, um, especially for all of you in the United Kingdom and, and Canada and New Zealand and Australia. All of you guys, yeah, um, you were all very, um, good, um, people for the Queen, and she was, she was a very good leader. It's very sad that she's gone now, but she's back with, um, Prince Philip and all of those corgis that she's had over the years. They're probably having a very big party at the Rainbow Bridge, I think. Um, I'm probably not going to make this too terribly funny this week because it's kind of a sad time. But um, I, I do, I do would like to say that um, my mom and I, we were talking about, you know, that the, the, the Queen's purse that she carries and you know what a mystery it is as to what she has in there and I, I just think I might know I think that she has a pack of Kleenexes because you never know when you're going to sneeze you know although I kind of get the impression that the Queen never sneezes ever but like I suppose that's not true um, and I think she probably, um, has a quarter in case she gets, um, separated from everybody and she needs a ride home. She can call the palace and somebody can come and, come and get her, although I don't think that really phone booths are around too much anymore, so maybe, maybe she has a, a cell phone. A little cell phone that she keeps in there, I doubt that might be. And then, of course, I am so sure that she's probably got quite a few little dog treats in there because you never know when you're going to run into a dog and you would just like to um, give it a little treat and pat its head. And she would do that. She would do that. She might even have some sugar cubes in there in case she runs into any horses. And, and I, I bet you that's true because she loved her horses too. Um, now, corgis, I was reading a little bit about them. They're kind of funny little things. There's two different kinds. There's a cardigan Welsh corgi. And um, I think that uh, when it was invented or uh, um, became a dog breed that um, it must have been someplace where it was very cold and all the townspeople had to wear sweaters all the time and so I think that uh, somebody said hey I have an idea let's call this dog breed a cardigan Welsh um, corgi because look at us all standing around here admiring this new breed and we all have on our cardigans so that's how that breed got its name I'm pretty sure now the ones that the Queen liked the best the Pembroke Welsh corgi now, I was reading, and um, I heard, or I mean, I read that um, it said that um, um, the Celtic word for dog is a corgi, or cor, C-O-R, which means dwarf, and G-I, which means dog, dwarf dog. Well, that's kind of... Kind of true, because they're pretty short-legged little things, aren't they? And, um, also, um, it says, or also for C-W-R in Welsh means to watch over. So, here we have these little dwarf dogs 
watching over our queen. They probably did all these years, all of her corgis that went before her. They were watching over her all this time. And now, she and Prince Philip and all the corgis, they're having a big party up there at the Rainbow Bridge, I bet. She's probably really happy. Um, and they're really happy, too. Now, that Pembroke name, I don't know where that came from for sure. But I think in, in Welsh, it said it was like Pembroke. I'm not pronouncing it right, I'm sure. But pen means um, head or end. So, um, I don't know if that means they don't know which, which end is what. I don't know. But also, um, you know, shire, that means county. You guys already know that. So you've got Pembroke Shire, so they've got like, what, a broken head county? I don't know how that, how that name came about. But, um, it, it doesn't matter because they're cute little dogs, all of them. And, um, they're very popular, especially, uh, with the Queen and and I heard that the ones that she has now are gonna go and live with um, us, um, some relatives that really will love them and treat them real nice. So that's a good thing too. So, um, I don't know too much else of what to say this week because it's just kind of a sad week for everyone, and, and, and so I don't want to start, you know, cracking a bunch of jokes, you know, or, um, speaking of crack, I don't want to start talking about that 95-year-old crack, I mean, that, that doesn't seem very appropriate either, or, you know, um, like, let's, let's, We'll just skip this week talking about spotted dick anything, because that wouldn't be funny either. I don't know, the Queen might, might have thought that was funny in private. She would never let any of the rest of us know that she thought that was funny. But um, I think she probably would have thought it was funny. So we're going to kind of just leave all those things where they are. And, um, maybe later in the week, after we've had some time to, to grieve and be sad, and, uh, you know, then maybe I can, um, come back on and be funnier. And it's almost time for the Queen's funeral. I'm up really, really late, and so is my mom, so she's probably gonna fall asleep at her desk tomorrow. And, um... You really can because I'm telling you I've been to that insurance office. It is boring. Oh, it's such a snooze. Literally. So you guys just kind of take care. And and let's have a, a few days here of, of sadness and, and grief. And, and really we should be happy because... She, she served the country, she served the world, actually, really well for a very long time. And now it's her turn to rest. So you guys take care. I love you all, you know that. And I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.